Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular deals. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash <laughs> offer on the table today. 200 220 No. No? No. You said that so <laughs> quick. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, no way. Don't accept that. Have a gamble. Go to auction and you might just get a little bit more money there. 420 I'll be on hand at all times to help and advise you. Today the show comes to you from Crewe in Cheshire. Just look at this crowd. They've been queuing since early this morning. They've brought along their treasures. They're determined to sit down with our dealers. They want to get the better of them. They want to walk away, you know why, with the real deal. Lots of goodies for our dealers to get stuck into today. First up, Ron's putting pressure on Joe Brayshaw. You've brought in this um, aneroid barometer, I believe it is. Yes. How is it yours? Well, my mother died about two months ago, and it was my father's who died about ten years ago. So it was hanging on the wall, so I thought, well, I'll take that, and I thought I'd bring it up here today. It looks like it's probably a Victorian one. Who dropped it? I don't know. That was already there when... Uh, when I had it, but it's working perfect. I've had it checked out and everything. It's a yeah. shame about that. Absolutely, it is, yes. And it looks like something's gone off the top of there, it really, doesn't yeah, it? Probably. And I have no idea how old it is. It looks like it's sort of 1900 ish, doesn't it? Yes, yes. You got any ideas? I haven't, no. How much is it? I don't know. You don't know? I'm asking you, yeah. One day, <laughs> I'm going to ask that question and somebody's going to go, OK, £1,000. No. <laughs> Nice try. You did say. <laughs> hey, do, do, do. hey ho, hey ho, off to work we go. Fifty pounds. No. You sure? Yes, I'm dead certain, Joe. Sixty pounds. Here comes David. Right. Let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say, and I'll tell you what I think. They say a mixture. 40, 60, 60, 100. I would have said certainly within the hundred had this have been perfect. And nowadays, dealers have to be picky and choosy. So I'm going to say to you, 60 is not a bad offer. If you do go to auction, there is a reasonable chance of getting a bit more. But the offer on the table is not too bad. Well, Joe, not a penny more. Not a penny more. I'm going to deal. You're going to deal? I am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thanks indeed. Thanks for bringing Thank it in. Thank you. It was doing no good at home. It was just clutter. My wife has got to spend the money, I think, because I promised her the money. <laughs> Will Joe manage to sell the damaged barometer on for a profit? Find out later. Mark Stevens is firing up his next deal. He sat down with Seller Dave. Flintlock pistol, but yep. tell me, how did you come by it? I spotted it at an uh, antique fair over at Northwich, local to me, and uh, the finish on it just attracted me to it, something a bit different. And how long ago was that? About three years ago now. About three years like ago? That, yes. OK, fine. From first looking at this gun, it's definitely Middle East and Far East. There's, right. there's no doubt about it. I think the age of it ran about 1800, 1820. It's inlaid, as we can see here, with either bone or ivory. I'm not quite sure if every piece of that is original. Mm -hmm. um, I think it might have had a few slight repairs and adaptations to it. Um, yes. It's got quite a bit of pitting you know, like here. You see like the pit marks here where over the years it's corroded. Yeah. But there's no proof marks anywhere on the gun, which I find slightly yes. unusual. It, I would have thought somewhere on there, there would have been some marking, and there isn't any. I think, for me, it's more decorative. You know, yeah. it has a, a more decorative appeal of it, rather than a collector wanting to come in and buy a nice flintlock pistol. Um, it's got the ramrod here. I mean, everything is there, but I just feel that the person that will end up buying this gun will 
have it on their wall yeah. rather than a, a collector to come and say, I want to put this into my collection. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, well, there's only one thing to do, and it's to put some money on the table. What do you think, David? Why not? Why not? Right, let's, let's see what you can offer. Let's see what we've got. 20, 40, 60 pounds, David. No, I, uh, I paid a fair bit more than that. Before. I'm sure you did. Mm. You know, coming from an antique fair, I mean, somebody sold it, you've got to get a profit as you well. No, mm. I can see you giving more money for it. I'm just not 100 convinced about this gun, not 100% convinced. Mm. There's something about it, and I always go with my gut instinct. Uh, it's how I've always traded. Mm. Um, so, to be perfectly honest, what I want to do, I, I'm going to put one more of those on the table, which right. makes it 80 pounds. Right. But I don't really want to go much more. What would you like to do? I'll take it to the auction then, thank I think you you're much. doing the wise thing. Thank you very thank much you very indeed, much. David. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. I didn't feel there was enough money on the table for that particular deal. I was hoping for a little bit more. So in the end, I think it looks like we're going to end up at the auction. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm not convinced it's totally genuine. I think the auctioneer will have to do a, a bit more research on this piece, and I'm pretty sure they will find there are certain elements about this that are not correct. So will the gun backfire at auction? Let's head straight to the cell room where Robert Stones is about to take up his gavel. Now, you brought along, I think, a rather attractive wall piece. A flintlock pistol, octagonal barrel, uh, a, a fair bit of decoration to the stock, you sat down with Mark Stevens, yes. good bid of Mark, and he said, I'll, I'll give you it, he's a cockney, he said, give me 80 quid, give me 80 quid for that pistol. Yep. You said no. Mm. We have a reserve of 100 pounds, I think that's realistic. Is it gonna fire up in the sale room? Well, let's find out. It's coming up now. Lovely thing, how much may we save for this? 80 pounds a bit for this straight away, it's 80 pounds, I have it 80 and five now do I hear. For the pistol, 85, 90, 95, bids at 95, at 95, 100 is an hour. They're looking for 100 for the reserve. It's very close. 100 there, 100 and 5, 105, 110, 115, 120, 120, 125, 130, 125 bids there, 125, 130 anywhere else. 125 is on the internet. Bids there at £125 and going to be sold at £125 then. Gavel has gone down at £125. I make that just a little bit over £102. So, your first reaction, are you satisfied with the £102? Are satisfied with that? OK. It made the reserve. It made £125. It went off with a bang here in the sale room. You are going home, Dave, with £102 on that is the real deal. Yes, thank you very much, David. Pleasure. Back to business and our first visit to Michael Hogburn. Are you a collector of Troika? Um, I collect everything, to tell you the truth. A bit of this and a bit of that. And this is a chance to get rid of some of it, so I thought, well, I'll fetch it along. Come and see you, though. I oh, don't blame you. Troika is a very interesting pottery. It started in the 60s and it was inspired by all the paintings in the prehistoric caves. Mm. And at the beginning, the three designers of Troika were actual painters, not potters. And some of the pots they made in the very early days were substandard. Yeah. So you often see a little crack or a little flaw in a bit of Troika. For me, that adds to the charm of it. Mm. These are very small. These are called the wheel vases. This one is a bit later than, obviously, these ones are. And they're all hand-painted. They're, you know, they're all hand-fired and... So they're quite nice, but why are you selling them now then? Basically, um, they're going to get smashed. <laughs> I can see it happening. Um, I have lots of children in the house. I have foster yeah. care, you see. So the actual mouth of children coming in and out of the house um, and just yeah. young children don't mix with pottery, do they? <laughs> no, no, that's very true. It's all about the money, really, isn't it? Yep. I'll tell you what it's worth to me, Andy. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 pounds. No, we're way too low with that. I think it's worth a bit more than 140. Yeah. David, I'm just being a bit mean, I'm gonna put a bit more down. Let me tell you where the independent values in the auctioneer are. They say 200, 250. I suppose they're looking at 70 to 80 pounds a piece. They are desirable, they are collectible, they are still voguish in the sale room. He knows, <laughs> he knows. I think I would get 70 quid each for these on a good day, you know? Yeah. 
where are we? We're 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 20 and 40, 160, 170 pounds. No, still too low. How much more do you want, Andy? Um, probably 250. Uh, I can't. I don't think I can go 250. I'll try and meet you a little bit nearer there, but I can't. I don't. I definitely can't go 250. I'm afraid. 180, 190, 200, 210. So, Andy, it's 210. It's a take it or leave it offer now. I'll take it. Good boy. Thank you. Thanks very much. Troika is one of those antiques of the future, and I think even at £210, that's got value written all over it. Our hockey loves a bit of Troika. Coming up, yeah. wise words from the master. You've got to say more. It's Gramps' watch. Come on, mate, any chance of a bit more money? And he's the kind of guy that'll look after you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Five pound lot. Five, you want more? I won't be able to eat. What about my poor children? <laughs> You've got a lot of money. <laughs> Someone's got the measure of you, Mark. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Lots of wheeling and dealing here in Crewe. Valerie's next up. I've had it in a box now for 20 years. I'm too afraid to take it out just in case I break it and I'm hoping now to get a little bit of money for it. David and auctioneer Robert Stones have spotted that this vase has a well-known name attached to it. They're taking a keen interest in this deal with Janice Kehoe. It's a piece by Keith Murray, yes. who's a very famous New Zealand designer. He was born, I think, in about 1891, came over and worked in England. The signature on the bottom, it's very, very clear. If you can just see there, Keith Murray. Yeah. S&W Brierley, yeah. which is, the S&W is for Stevens and Williams, who were a glassmaker in the Birmingham area. It's a beautiful piece of glass. Now, Robert, an interesting piece of glass here. This is not my area, but Keith Murray rings the bell. Where are you going to place your estimation? Well, I'm thinking it could be making about £250, something like that. OK. okay. Independent values, they're the same frame of mind, around that 200 to 250 mm. Yeah. Let's see what our dealer puts on the table. Let's see if she rates it. Yeah, so nice piece of glass, and we'll see what we can do for you. Right, thank you. 50, 20, 40, 60, 80... 150. How do you feel about that? Um, it's good, but I don't think it's enough. You don't think it's enough? No. OK. I will increase my offer. We've got 170, 180. How's that, Valerie? Well, it's good, but it's still not enough. I don't not think. enough. Um, well, I'll increase it to 200. Now, what do you think about that, Valerie? 200 pounds is on the table now. What's your feelings about that? Getting close, David. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to tell our seller it is pretty close. Will she get more in auction? Well, questionably. Mm. But I need to get in there and give her some advice. Yeah. Mm, it's, it's good, but I still want some more. OK, well, here's David. Interesting lot, this. It does have something. Its lines, the quality of the glass, it really has a very special look, which fits, I think, in today's marketplace. Now, the independent values on the auctioneer, they're all within, really, 2 to 250. So I'm going to say, at the moment, that's not a bad offer. Now, you can gamble and you can go to auction, but we need two like-minded people that will bid against each other. Yes. I have to say, I'm a convert. I look at that and I rate it. Thank you. Valerie, I'll see if I can tempt you with one final offer. I'll put another £10 down, and that's 210 and that, I'm afraid, is going to be my final offer. I'd like 120 and then we'll say it's a deal. I'll split the difference with you at 215 but I, I can't go to 220 That's fine. OK. Yep. 215 Yes. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Always worth pushing dealers for that extra fiver, Valerie. Well done. Watch out, Mark, a mother and son duo is hoping that a little teamwork will seal this deal. 
Hi, like James, I'm Mark. Nice Hello, to meet Mark. you. And this is your mum, Helen? Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you, Helen. So, is this your watch? Yes, it is. Right, it was quite an old watch. So, how did you come by that? Um, my granddad gave it to me. As a present? Yeah. Um, yeah. Very nice. Do you wear it? No. I tried to wear it to school once, but my mum said no. I think your mum gave you very good advice. Okay, so I don't know if you know, but this watch is actually made of nine carat gold. Now, the way we can tell this, if we take the watch, turn it over and open the back up here, if you look, if you can see there, yeah. Yeah, it's fully hallmarked. And 375 means 375 parts out of a thousand are gold. Okay? Also, we have where it was made and also who the maker is and the retailer. Now, on this particular watch, it's actually Benson of London. Now, Benson were a well known and well respected company. They made very, very nice watches and pocket watches. And what's also nice with this one, I think it's probably made in the 1930s, and we have a white porcelain dial. The only slight drawback with that is if you drop it, they tend to crack very easily. If you were to sell it today, what are you going to do with the money? Most of it's going in my bank. In your bank? And I'm going to keep some of it, but I don't know for what. Maybe buy Mum a little present? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Mum? I don't think there's much chance of a present, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I do, I'm going to put some money on the table now for you and you can make a decision, but you have the option, you can either sell it to me or if not, you know you can go to the sale, OK? So I'll get some money for you. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds. No. I didn't say I'd finished, did I? <laughs> you jumped the gun a bit there, didn't you? Right, but don't worry, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put down one more, oh, let's turn it around now, to make that £80. But mm -hmm. what we do, I think, we'll get David in and let's get, let him have a look okay. at it and give you some advice. Would you like that? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine. OK, here he comes now. Now, this came from your granddad, didn't it? Yes, it did. So we've got to try and get the best price we can because it's, it's Gramps' watch. And so we just need that extra little bit of money. Our independent value and the auctioneer, they go from 100 to 150 and they go from 100 to 200. You've got to say, Mark, it's Gramps' watch. Come on, mate, any chance of a bit more money? And he's the kind of guy that'll look after you. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you, sir. OK, yeah, right. So we've heard from David. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all those off the table. I'm going to put those there. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to go into here. Tell what we're going to do. There's £50. There's £100. One, two, and one more for your granddad. £130. Um, now, how does that sound to you, James? Um, a little bit more, please. Uh, you still want a bit more? Yeah, please. Please? Oh, you're a very polite young boy. You're going to keep this money, you're not going to lose it and do anything with it. You're going to put it in the bank and earn a bit of interest for you, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Promise me? Yeah. Right, OK. One, two, there's £150 for you. Five pounds more. Five pounds? You want more? <laughs> I, I won't be able to eat. What about my poor children? <laughs> but you've got a lot of money. <laughs> I wish I did have. Five pounds more. I don't really deal in five pounds, but you're a lovely young man and it's been a pleasure, so I'm going to put down another ten pounds to you. How about that, James? Yeah. Is that a deal? Yeah. You're a gentleman. Thank you very That's much, good. James. Thank, Thank you. you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. I think it went good and I, and I like the amount of money I got. I don't care if I make a profit on that one, you know. I'd rather the boy have the money for his future, to be perfectly honest. You see, our dealers do have hearts. Now, Jack is with our resident Diamond Geezer. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Why are you selling yours? Because it's actually in a cupboard and is it's it? not been out for, well, years. And uh, I've never had it on my finger. It's just in the cupboard. So, is it a family piece? It was my great aunt's who left it to my mother. And you don't want to wear it? Or? No, frightened to. Really? Mm. You should never be frightened to wear anything like this. It's a nice little ring. It's quite a nice diamond, this one. It's, it's sort of a light yellow. It's not a, it's a solid yellow. And the colour of the diamonds, really, often reflects the price of them and the quality. And I think it's about half a carat. When you look at it, it's, it's got a couple of little tea leaves in it, as we call them, which is... Like, they're just the little marks in there. It's not over, you know? 
and it's, it's a little bit cloudy, but it's a nice cut diamond, and it's on an 18 karat gold shank. So what are you going to do with the money then? I'm going to split it between my children. In that case, I'll make you an offer, shall okay, I? Okay, lovely, thank you. I'll tell you what it's worth to me, 50, 100, 50, 200, 220. No. 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 You said that so <laughs> quick. I thought we were just getting friends then. Well, I just need a little bit more. A little bit more? As we more. always say. <laughs> a little bit more? 20 quid, there's a little bit more. That's 240 pounds. No. How much more do you want? Another red one. <laughs> 290 quid. And possibly a brown one. Oh, please. <laughs> I've got to make a profit. I've got to make I a think little you make bucket. a good profit out of Look, that. I tell you what, there's 240 quid down there. I'll go 260. And I think that's a really good offer for that. What do you think, David? Well, the colour is what they describe as a light fancy. They are saying between three and five hundred. We've got a three to four and we've got a three to five. On the show of 260, I'm going to say that probably is worth a gamble. Not a bad offer from our friend Hoggy, but maybe it's not really his kind of thing. And so I'm going to say that's worth a punter's auction. Thank you, David. So look, I am going to tempt you with another couple of tenors. Okay. Two hundred and eighty pounds. No, I think I'll take it to auction. Thank you. I think it's the right thing to do. Okay. I wish you luck. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. Fingers crossed, Jackie. It's over to the Duke. You brought along, I think, a rather pretty ring. It was an old cut, but what was nice about it, it's what we call a fancy. It was pale yellow. You turned down £280 from Michael Hogburn, but I don't think that was quite enough. The reserve here is £350. Are the buyers here? Are they on the internet? Fingers crossed. We'll find out. Fingers crossed. Now, if this doesn't sell, Get that on your finger. Enjoy it. It's a very pretty ring. It's coming up now. What may we say for this one? £300 bid straight away at £300 a bid. Three tens the next bid. Three ten, three twenty, three thirty, three forty, three fifty. Your bid at three fifty. It's at three fifty on the reserve. I'd like to see a bit more. Going to be sold at three fifty. All finished and done. Going away then. Being sold. Three hundred and fifty pounds then. Three hundred and fifty pounds. For a great answering, we have some commission to take off. I make that £287. What do you think? That's OK. A little disappointed. A little bit okay. disappointed. I do understand that. I also feel a little bit disappointed. I thought it could have brought a little bit more. 350 under the gavel. I don't want you crying. <laughs> Not on my show. OK, 350 Take away the commission, 287 That is the real deal. Yeah. Still to come. I think I've got I've sort of got a, an emotional attachment as well. With two P's in antiques, you're selling with passion, I'm buying with profit in mind. But I'd like to buy it. A duel between passion and profit. Which will be victorious? It's been non-stop for our dealers here in Crewe, but Jo's ready for her next item. She's been joined by Colin. How'd you come to have a silver rose bowl that was given to primitive Methodists on their 25th wedding anniversary <laughs> in 1913? Well, uh, I purchased it at auction a few years ago. And have you used it? Uh, well, not really, no. It's just been on display as it, uh, as it is. The hallmarks are so badly worn. Yes, yes, that's, um, that's right. I can't yes. make them out, but I'm assuming <laughs> it's about 1913 yeah. since it yeah. was given as a gift uh, then. Unfortunately, because the um, hallmarks are so badly worn, the really the only outlet for it is, you know what I'm going to say, aren't you? Scrap, Scrap. value, yeah. Because you can't sell items when they're as worn as that retail. And I'm really sorry, Rose Bull, to be so cruel to you, but I'm, I'm being honest, you know, it's a scrapper. Measured it, weighed yeah. it, weighs about 16 ounces. Right. That's 100. 200, they are real, they're just Scottish. And 50 pounds. Yeah, 
Yes, that's a very, very fair offer. Uh, could, I, could I persuade you to go a little more? There would be no point in me buying it. I would just be um, giving my money away. Right, OK. I need to make a profit on it. And um, I've offered you the scrap price for it, basically. I think also the... the I can tell you that 200 250 is about the estimation. Silver, unless it's exceptional, unless it's quirky and different, is difficult to sell. I'm going to say no hesitation, that's a good price. You're going to have to get £300 in the sale room to get back with commission to that. And I don't know what it is up in Newcastle, but why are they like those rose poles? <laughs> Fair enough, yeah, that's, that's, that's great, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. We've got a deal. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much for coming okay. in. Well, I've received £250 and I feel very pleased with that. It's a real deal. A generous offer from Joe and Colin cashes in. Beryl's rolled up. She's hoping for a spirited offer from Janice. Pleased to meet you. I'm Beryl. Hello, Beryl. Hello. What have you brought today? It's uh, from a friend who passed away 20 years ago and his family passed it on to me. So he worked for Rolls Royce for many, many years? Oh, a lot of years, yeah. yes. Let's have a look at these. We've got um, a desk uh, sized spirit of ecstasy. I think it's silver plated metal. Right. Looking at it. Lovely condition. I, I don't think um, there's any wear to it or any no, damage to it. No, it's been kept in a safe place. Yeah. And the other item we've got. He had that it's, given presented to him, yes, on yeah. his retirement. It's, um, it's a lighter. Yes. Mm. I think in antiques terms, there's, there's not a great age to them. They're probably. No. About 30, 30 years old, so maybe 40 years old. Yes. But, uh, you know, there is a market. If you did um, sell the items today, what yes. would you do with the money? I'm going to put it towards a holiday. Oh, no. very nice. Yes. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no pressure. <laughs> right, we'll see what we can do for you. OK. 10, 20, 25 pounds. No, I don't think so. You don't think no. so? No. no. Right, OK. I'll put another £10 on, I think, and we'll take that up to £35. That, I think, is going to be as far as I'm happy to go. Yes. Now, here comes David. Let's see what David right, thinks. Right, David. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the gentleman you're talking about worked all his life, and after a full working life, he didn't get a, a clock or a gold watch, he got a mascot as a desk piece and, of course, a lighter. Now, our independent value was, I'll say, 50 to £80. Pounds. I think 35 is a little bit on the low side. We could just do with pressing our dealer and say, this man worked all his life for this. Can we not get another tenner off you? I mean, I think at 45, I would say, take the money because right. I think the 50 to 80 I think is being optimistic right I'm going to say perhaps a wing and a prayer you could say <laughs> come on Please. give us a little bit more and yes. then I think okay. it's worth a sale thank you very much thank all you all right I'll tell you what I'll do then Beryl I'll put another five pounds down and that makes 40 pounds in all right but that is my final limit. offer all what right. would you like to do I'm happy with that then okay. thank you very much thank you very thank much, you indeed, very much. Beryl. nice meeting you You drove a hard bargain there, Beryl. Over to Hoggy. A lovely lady bought me in a lovely lady item. Oh, yeah. It's a lady's gun. Yeah. Where did you get it? We got it at a military fair about 25 years ago. And what, are you a collector of military or...? I was interested in it. The family are interested in it. We always yeah. like Napoleonic and just beyond Napoleonic, so... Yeah. We liked it very much. Napoleon 1805. Yeah, I think this is might be a little bit later. Yeah, I was going to say, this yeah. is 1820, 1840, around that way, yeah. isn't it? But it's just so petite, isn't it? You know, when you think of guns of this period, you think of massive, like, you know, didn't you? But I think this could have done damage. Oh, it's certainly, yeah. Yeah. So, you bought it today. Why, why are you selling it? Any reason? Well, I think I've had it 25 years. I think it's time now to let somebody else enjoy it. So it's all about the money, Sylvia, isn't it? Yes. How about 20, 40, 50 pounds? No. 
No. It's 50, 60, 70 pounds. We're not where I want to be, no. Would you be happy with 80? No. How much more do you want, Sylvia? Let's see if we can deal. I want, because I've had it so long, I think I've got, I've sort of got a, an emotional attachment as well, so. Fine. The thing is, I don't buy emotions. Yeah. I buy itself profit. There's two P's in antiques, profit and passion. You're selling passion, I'm buying with profit in mind. So will we ever meet anywhere? No, I think it's going to be going to auction. But I'd like to buy it, you know, I, 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 without all the passion. I'd just like to buy it, to buy and sell it, because that's what we do. I think it's going to be more than what you want to put down. 80, 90 pounds. No, I'm, I'm going, still going to leave it. I, I really can't pay any more than that for it, Sylvia. Yeah, that's fine, then yeah. I'm going to go to auction. Yeah, OK. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Only Let's shoot off to the sale room. Now, on the deals day, Sylvia, you brought along a small pistol, a percussion pistol. You sat down with Michael Hogman on the day, um, the diamond geezer, we call him, and he offered you £90. What do you think to that offer? I thought it was worth a little bit more, and I've never been to an auction. Okay. So you thought, well, I might as well have a gamble. I haven't been to an auction. I'll take a chance on that. The reserve is now set at £100. You've turned down 90 but remember, there is 15% commission to be taken off. And there's a little bit of that on top of the commission. So it's coming up now. What do you think? Are we going to do it? Let's go for it. Yeah. OK, we're going for it. Let's see if it sells here in the sale room. Here it is now. How much may we say? £80 for it straight away. Surely at £80, do I hear? At £80 anywhere, and at £80 I'm bid, at £80 and five I'll take. At £85, £85, £90 anywhere now. £85 I have, £90 I'm bid then. Internet's coming in. £100. At £100, bid's there, £100 and I shall sell. It's at the reserve. 105 is that on the internet? At 105, 110. At 110 I'm bid in the room then. 110 is in the room. They're, they're looking at the internet. At £110 and will be sold at £110. Last chance, being sold at £110 then. Sold at 110 Gavel went down at £110. We have a little bit of commission to take away. Round about £90 to come back. Satisfied or disappointed? I'm satisfied because I've never been to an auction before and it's been a, a lovely experience. Bit of an eye-opener? Yeah. Enjoyed yeah. it? I've enjoyed it, yeah. You've heard what Sylvia says. She came along, she enjoyed the auction. Why don't you try it sometime? Coming up. Not finished yet? No, I see. 1600? No, no. 1650? No. You are a hard cookie to crack. No. Will this cookie crumble? It's been a great day in crew, and one final golden opportunity has arisen with Mark. Hi, John, I'm Mark. Hello. Nice to meet you. And you too. You bought me in a very, very nice gold charm bracelet here. Yes. Got a funny feeling it might not be yours, though, is that No, correct? it's not mine, it's my wife's. <laughs> She's asked me to bring it in. Right, OK. <clears throat> Did she collect all the charms herself? Is it no. when you've been abroad or people bought them as presents? That's right, yes. They've been gifts, yeah. So For wherever... special occasions, birthdays, Christmas, all these are individually made. Right. And the lock on this locks with a key that's on the back. Right, OK, and, yeah. And uh, all the charms are, are workable, even the mouth organ. Really? Blows. OK, yeah, you can see they're very well-made charms. Yes. Quite a heavy weight, all nine carat apart from the two coins, which are obviously 22 carats. But it's a good, it's a nice looking thing yeah it's got a lot of lot of weight to it mm -hmm. i mean if you were to sell it today what are you going to do with the money well the wife would like a car or put the money towards a I car i was going to say <laughs> please <laughs> i'm hoping she'll get enough for it well then we're coming down to one thing yeah money yes so i've got a funny feeling you like red don't you yes yeah, i thought so so that's how we should start shall we yes so i dive in the pocket and pull some out yes please 
50, 150, 200, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 50, 800, 50, 900, 950, 1,000 pounds. 1,050, 1,100, 1,150. Not finished yet? No, I see. 1,150, 1,200, 1,250, 1,300, 1,350, 1,400, 1,450, 1,500, 1,550 pounds. No, the wife told me how much. You're going to tell me? No. Nope. Oh! <laughs> you I gathered thought, that. I thought I was reading you in there. You were going to tell me. No, oh, you gathered that. Oh, OK. We've got 15.50 on the table there. Yep. We're getting a little bit close, I must tell you, John. Yes, yes. Uh, OK. I'll tell you when you get that. 1,600? No, no. 16.50? No. You are a hard cookie to crack. Not really. Right, 1700 That's the price I want to give. Yeah, that's a good offer, but if you could just do another one, then that will do it. So you want another 50 quid to secure the deal, is that what you're telling yes, me? Yes, yes. Are you going to be happy with that? No, but uh, it'll do for the time <laughs> 1750 you've got to be happy, come on! <laughs> uh, OK, all right, OK. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, there we are. It'll buy the wheels. Uh, buy the wheels, <laughs> oh, it's got to be a good car. <laughs> £1,750. Is that a deal, John? It is. You sure? I'm positive. Pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you, John. <laughs> the gold bracelet was all the money, but, again, I would rather own something like that and earn a small profit than not get a profit at all. A smart deal from Mark, and John heads out for a new set of wheels. <laughs> Our dealers have been dishing out the dosh and together have laid out over £3,000 of their own money. But have they been able to convert any into profit? It was a hard day for Hoggy. No, I think I'll take it to auction, thank you. I think it's the right thing to do. I wish you luck. £80, £90. Pounds. I'm going to go to auction. Yeah, OK. I wish you luck. Thank you. And the vase collection? Troika is one of those antiques of the future. And I think even at £210, that's got value written all over it. With one eye on the future, Hoggy is keeping the Troika as an investment. Thank you very much indeed. Janice had two deals today. The vase was sold on at an antique fair for a small markup. The Rolls Royce items cruised along to auction and gave Janice a top result. Joe purchased two things today. Deal. You're going to do it? I am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thanks indeed. Thank you, Neil. The barometer was sold on to a collector for £90. Unfortunately, because the hallmarks are so badly worn, the only outlet for it is scrap. scrap. Yeah. And true to her word, Jo scrapped the bowl and reaped a small profit. And finally, we come to Mr Stevens. £1,750. Is that a deal, John? It is. After a massive outlay, he managed a respectable return for the bracelet. Young James piled on the pressure, which meant only the one profit for Mark today. Five pounds more. Five pounds? You want more? I won't Please. be able to eat. What about my poor children? <laughs> so you've got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Top whack for the watch meant even Stevens for Mark. I don't care if I make a profit on that one. You know, I'd rather the boy have the money for his future, to be perfectly honest. It's been a really exciting day here in Cheshire. Lots of things have turned up. There's been lots of buying, lots of selling, lots of action. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.